In chapter 21, we find a lesson of what to do when life gets confusing. I don't know if you've ever been at a time in life when uh, it just didn't make sense. That's what it was like for Peter. In John 21, if you think about where Peter was, he had gone through the last days of Christ's ministry. He'd gone through all the promises Jesus made in the upper room at the Last Supper. He had, he had just been brokenhearted as Jesus washed his feet as he realized the, the pride in his own life. And then he had been elated as Jesus made all those great promises walking to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is John 15, John 16, John 17. Jesus spoke those walking from the Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane. And Peter was just overwhelmed at all that was uh, before him. And then he came to the point of, of the garden and was overwhelmed with tiredness. And so he fell asleep. When he woke up, you know what happened. He saw the torches. He saw the hundreds of people. He saw the, the arrest of Jesus. And he fled. Then he followed at a distance. We'll be there at Galicantu. And a servant girl made him so afraid that he denied Christ not once, not twice, but three times. And Jesus, who knows our confusion, had to restore Peter because Peter thought, I can't do it now. You know, I denied him. How can I lead his disciples and, and work in his church? So in chapter 21, the first three verses, Jesus uh, leads them in a progressive restoration of a confused Peter. The first three verses of chapter 21, the end is, and that night they caught nothing. The first thing that Jesus wanted them to know is that they couldn't do anything on their own. The disciples were right out here. It says they were just a hundred yards offshore and they were there fishing. You see, when you get confused, usually you go back to what you're most comfortable with. And so Peter was most comfortable on these shores he loved this end. There are springs that come out, warm springs that come into the sea right here. The fish love it. This is the fisherman's paradise right here at this corner. And so he went back to his favorite fishing hole. At least that's one thing he could do. He knew he could fish. He didn't think he could apostle or lead or preach, but he could fish. When we get confused, we often go back to what we think we're good at. And Jesus reminds us, like right here, they caught nothing. Jesus wanted them to know that they couldn't do anything on their own. Then, if you keep reading, verses 4 and 5, But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, right where you are standing and sitting right now. Jesus was right here on this shore, right next to the spot where he had taught in the cove of the sower. They knew this spot. Their boats were, were always here. And Jesus was here on the shore, and it says, they did not know it was Jesus. Through the fog, through the mist, early in the morning, they'd fished all night, it was still dark. But when the morning had now come, as Jesus stood there, then it says in verse 5, Jesus said to them, calling across the water, Children, have you any food? And you could hear their answer across the water. No! See, Jesus not only wanted to remind them they couldn't do anything on their own. He wanted them to confess, confess that he, he asked them to tell what their efforts had produced and they said nothing, nothing. You see, without God's blessing, every fish in this sea, Jesus could keep from their nets. He didn't want them to catch anything. They could have dragged the whole sea. It's interesting for us to think about that we can try in our own flesh to do anything and it amounts to nothing. But keep reading in verse 6. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fishes. The sharp tug on the rope in his hand was the weight of an entire shoal of fish summoned by the master of creation. Peter could feel he was a fisherman. He felt that tug of that net that jerked Peter out of resignation and apathy to full alert. What he remembered was, Luke tells us, not too far from here, 
when Jesus had first called Peter, he had said, Peter, have you caught anything? And Peter said, no. And Jesus said, cast your net, what? On the other side. And when he did, it almost broke the net. Did you know that's what Jesus reminded Peter of? The same situation? You see, he's the master. He could make every fish in the sea come into his net or keep them all out. And you know, the same Jesus that did that back then is still at work today. When we try and do stuff in our own strength, when we try and accomplish things on our own, when we work our hardest and sweat and work and toil, Jesus said, if you don't do it in my strength. Remember, on the way to the Last Supper and then on the way to the garden, Jesus said, apart from me, John 15, 5, you can do nothing. And Peter was so proud that night, he didn't realize that. And so Jesus wanted him to realize that he had to follow Christ's direction for their lives. The key was not what side of the boat he cast it on, right or left. That's not the lesson. You know, the right side's better than the left. The lesson is cast it where Jesus said. And he needed to learn it's not where we serve or how we serve, but whether we serve at Christ's command. It doesn't matter where you are or what you do. It's whether or not you're doing what Christ wants you to do. The key was listening to Jesus, doing what he said, not operating in our own initiative, not in our own wisdom. Ministry that is self-prompted, self-directed, self-energized, and self-satisfied always comes up empty in any production of anything that's eternal. Well, if you look at verse 7, it says, Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved, the Apostle John, said to Peter, It's the Lord. I'm sure Peter had come to that conclusion too. Now when Simon Peter heard that, you notice that Jesus calls him Simon. That's his old name. He says, you're acting like the old Simon. And John even says in this record, when Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and he plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in a little boat, for they were not far from land, about 200 cubits, about 100 yards. They were 300 feet off this shore dragging the net with fish, and as soon as they had come by land, they saw the fire of coals there. Fish laid on it. See, Jesus didn't need their, their net. He had his fire, he had the fish, and bread. And verse 10, And Jesus said to them, Bring some of your fish, which you have caught. And Simon Peter went up and dragged the net full to land of large fish, 153. How come 153? A lot of speculation on that. One fact is, in the first century, the taxonomic guide of all the species, known species at that time, that Pliny had come to was 153 different types of animals. So maybe Jesus was saying, hey, you can catch any kind of critter if you work for me. Although there were so many, verse 11 says it was not broken. The lesson here, Jesus blessed their obedience. Jesus will bless ours. Verse 12, Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you, knowing, knowing it was the Lord. And Jesus then came, took the bread, and gave it to him. Do you remember the last time they'd seen him giving him bread was the Last Supper? And the whole lesson of that Last Supper came through their mind again. Jesus wanted them to share the joy of his presence. You know what this meal on the shore was? It was reminding them that Jesus was going to be with them. Remember, we learned right behind you is our bell. You can see it in the distance. Up there, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. He came to the shore after Peter failed and said, I want you to share my presence all through life. When you open this book, when you have your quiet time and you're not in the Holy Land, Jesus is just as close. He wants you to remember. He wants you to share his presence. Did you know it's not the Bible, it's not a new truth, it's not reading and keeping up with your chart, it's whether or not you meet with him. That's the lesson. That's what we want to learn. Don't be content with just learning more principles. Meet with him and look up and say, what do you want me to do? How can I obey you in this area? One last lesson. Look at verse 15. So when they'd eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you agapao? Do you have self-sacrificing love for me uh, more than these? And he said, yes, Lord. You know that I like you. I enjoy your presence. I feel a closeness to you. 
And so Jesus, the word phileo, and so Jesus said to him again a second time, verse 16, Simon, son of Jonah, you notice the old Simon word, using his old name, his old identity, do you love me? He said, and that love is again self-sacrificial, are you willing to sacrifice for me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I phileo, I'm your friend, I, I just love to be with you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. Verse 17, and this is when it hit Peter because they were standing by a campfire in Galicantu at Caiaphas' house. They were by a fire. Peter had three questions asked him. Jesus was on his third question. Peter denied Jesus three times. Three times Jesus said, do you love me? But he changes, Jesus changes one word, and he says in verse 17, the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you phileo? Do you enjoy? being around me, do you, do you feel my love, phileo love, love that can be felt? And he said, yes, Lord, you know all things. You know I feel your love. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. You know, three times, not only did Jesus ask him a question, three times he gave him a commission, feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my lambs. Do you know why he emphasized so many times? Because he wanted him to know he really did want him to serve him. If you get confused in life, if you feel you failed the Lord, that you've tried too many times, that, that you made those promises, that you've made commitments to be in his word, or you've tried to overcome some besetting, life-dominating sin, then think of this shore right here. And think of Jesus with a campfire and a meal of fellowship with you, calling to you and to me out there in our boats, trying our hardest and failing. And he says, come ashore, quit doing your own thing, come to me. And I'll share the greatest gift of all, my presence, my fellowship, my forgiveness, and my recommissioning you to serve me. Let's bow before him on this spot and thank him for his love. Father in heaven, I thank you for your tender restoration of your beloved servant, Peter. We're all Peters from time to time. Every one of us go off and do what we know we can do and we just make a miserable failure of ourselves when we do it on our own, for ourselves, in our own strength. Even serving you in our own strength, we fail miserably. And you always are on the shore. You're always beckoning to us to come. You always welcome us to the fire and the fellowship and the food of your presence. Thank you for John 21, but more than that, thank you, Jesus. We love you. We worship you. We want to serve you. In your precious name we pray. Amen.